Hello everyone, welcome to Jennifer Sewing and Creativity. If it's your first time joining, welcome. If you are joining from a previous video or a previous subscriber, welcome back. In today's video, I am going to go over everything that the LCD and the control panel do on the Brother SC625 embroidery and sewing machine. You're going to have to know everything what this control panel does to even get started. So I thought I would just make a video that I show you what each thing is. And if you have any questions, please comment down below. I'm hoping I can get everything covered. So first of all, when you're going to turn on your machine, when you're ready to turn it on, you're going to have a welcome screen that is playing a video and you can either tap the screen and it's going to take you to a, another screen that tells you to select your language um, that you want to operate your machine in. So after you select that language what's going to happen is right here on it's on step three. It should be actually after step four. But what's going to happen is the light and the LCD screen and the start stop button light up when the machine is turned on. The needle and the feed dogs will make a sound when they move. This is not a malfunction. So I'm telling you that because I belong to a lot of sewing and quilting groups on Facebook. And if you haven't already experienced it, if you're a, if you're a sewer, um, you might have already experienced it through other, other people who sew, other quilters, things like that. They will tell you certain machines are junk. And that's just their opinion. They may not have any experience with that machine. Um, do not let that discourage you. Um, I have had brother machines for the last 20 years and I have never had a problem with a brother sewing machine other than regular maintenance. But that, I mean, that's not really a problem. That's just maintenance and your upkeep of your machine. On my sewing and quilting machine, which is a Brother SQ9185, um, the I bent the threader on it, and you have to you have to like flip these little levers as you're doing it, and you have to get the thread lined up on there just right, and to to use that needle threader. Well, while working on a quilt, I bent the needle threader. So I had to replace that. I do have a video where I show that. And um, if, if you would like to look at that video, please go to my, my channel and check that out. Um, I believe it's just replacing the needle threader on a Brother SQ9185. I believe that's what the title for that video is. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into what your operations panel, which are these buttons here, and then your LCD screen. So I have already went ahead and went in and done a few things and just so I can kind of familiarize with myself with some things so I can film for you. So, <coughs> excuse me. So when you turn it on, this is the noise you are going to hear after you select your language. Okay, that sound is perfectly normal. What that is, is it's your feed dogs, like I showed you there in that little note. It's your feed dogs and the needle, they're just kind of aligning themselves. That is perfectly normal. Okay, so our next thing what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the home screen. And this is my home screen. 
I just call the needle um, the stitch screen my home screen. Okay, we're going to pull this a little bit forward so we can see everything a little bit better. Okay, so when you go to your stitch screen, that's this button right here. Um, hope you can still see that okay. So this is your stitches. This is your embroidery button that takes you to your embroidery screen. This one is your settings. And let's go back to that. Okay, so this is what your page one of your settings is going to look like. And I'm taking you to the settings right away because there is a way to turn off that video. Every time you start your machine, that little video at the beginning is going to play. But you can go into your settings screen, go to page six of eight, and it says opening screen. You can turn it on or you can turn it off. I have it turned off because I don't want to see that every time I turn my machine on. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back to the first page. And we're going to return. And we're going to go to our stitches. Actually, I said I was going to show you what all these buttons were first. So this is your back button. This one is your lock screen button. So when this button is hit, you can't do nothing on the screen. Okay? That's going to lock everything. So when you're threading your needle, or you're winding your bobbin up here at the top, up there at the top, you're not going to accidentally hit something on that screen and possibly mess up the machine. I myself have to get used to using this because my previous brother machine did not have this. It was just power on or power off. That was, and then I just had a small, small little screen LCD screen that was to adjust the stitches okay so your lock button is very important don't forget to use your lock button when you thread or do anything with the needle area changing the feet anything okay um, even better yet you can turn it off so okay so these are your page buttons, your page up, your page down, or page left, right, your stitch buttons, your embroidery screen, your settings, and this one, oops, got to go back, this one with the little question mark and the sewing machine will take you to this screen, and what this goes over is it will do photos of how to thread your machine. The second option is how to wind a bobbin. Third option is how to put the bobbin in the machine. Fourth option is how to do your needles. Excuse me. The fifth option is how to attach the embroidery unit. The sixth option is, I believe, excuse me, um, how to put your, your embroidery frame onto the machine. And it just goes through that. Let's go back. And the seventh option is going to show you how to take off the regular, this one, it's going to show you how to take this, this whole foot piece off and it's going to show you how you put on your embroidery foot. And this is your embroidery foot. And kind of like this little float thing. Oops. Okay. So that's that. 
Then the last screen is going to show you how you replace and change your other feet, your other sewing feet. Okay, so let's go back. We're going to go to our stitches screen and the first row, one through four, are your utility stitches. So you have five pages of utility stitches. So you can flip all through those and then you go back. Your next number two is um, your number two. Um, those are your, not zigzag, let me check to get the correct name for you. Your number two are your overcasting stitches. I typically do not use them. Um, I don't sew clothing and I don't really do machine applique where some of these would come in handy. So um, I, just, I just don't use them. Okay, so those are those. Go back to the main screen. Your th number three are some of your, the number three stitches are your hem stitches. Okay. Also on your um, number two, let's go back to that real quick. Your number two, they have some patchwork joining stitches, some patchwork double overlock stitches, couching stitches, um, your smocking stitch, a feather stitch, some of these um, can be used for decorative sewing. If you're doing like crazy quilting, you can use those. Um, then you have like a, a ladder stitch and you have a rick rack. And it's just decorative. These are known as decorative top stitches. And same with this one also. And then you have a serpentine stitch I have a friend that does quilting and she likes to do the serpentine stitch when she does her quilting just to give it a little bit of design. So there's that. Then we're going to go to number four. Oops, we skipped over number three. Let me go back to number three. So your number three are your hem stitching and then you have um, they're also called heirloom stitching. Okay. And then go back. And number four are your buttonhole stitches. And there are several different types. There's um, number four, six is called your heir heirloom buttonhole stitch. There's a stretch buttonhole stitch, which this one is, which you would use for stretch fabrics. Again, I do not sew garments so I will not um, basically buttonhole stitches are a waste to me I just don't use them then there's a nice little stitch here this one um, is called an eyelet stitch so it's for making eyelets um, if you're going to like lace something up this will sew a stitch like that or if you um, are making like a fabric belt, you can put the belt holes into it. So that's what that one is. Okay, so then we have our decorative stitches. So number five is your decorative stitches. And they, they don't really have specific names for them but you have three pages of the decorative stitches. And I really like this one. This one is called a, it looks, I guess it's called a chain stitch. It looks like a, um, like a chain necklace. I really thought that one was kind of neat. I like this one also. It's kind of really different. And so we'll go back. Then this one, we have some satin stitches and there's just five of those. 
Then our next one are additional satin stitches. So number six were, were decorative satin stitches. Number seven is just the, some regular satin stitches. And then for the last one, number eight are called cross stitch stitches. And that's just um, number eight, one through five. Okay. So we are going to go back and we're going to go and hit number one. And now I'm going to tell you all these little separate things that are here on the, oops. I hit my power button, sorry about that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna tell you what each thing on here does. And I am going to select number one stitch and it brings up all these little fancy things. So what your number one is, is it's your, your stitches. So that's just, um, in the book, it's going to tell you your number one are the different stitches. So we're just going to stick with number one. Number two is the stitch pattern display size. So right here is it tells you 100. And when you change your stitch, okay, it didn't do it on there. I will have to go over that to see how this changes. Um, shows the approximate size of the stitch pattern selected. This is at 100%. Then um, if it's at 50%, it's half the size of the sewn stitch pattern. 25% is a quarter of the size of the stitch pattern. Um, I'm not sure how to change that yet. That is something that I have to learn. So, um, you know what? Is it this one? No. Hmm. Okay, not sure. Um, maybe the length? No. Nope. Hmm. Okay, so this one takes you back to what what the original screen was. So if you're t touching anything, um, it just... Oh, no. Did it lock it? I'm not sure what that did. Okay. I did something. Okay, there we go. I just wasn't pushing on it. I was just touching the screen. I wasn't pushing on it. Okay. So, like I said, um, okay, so a little off, off topic here. When I do a video, I like to keep in mistakes. And the reason why I do that is because my channel, I want to do it on a DIY basis. Um, let me explain that. It, a lot of people do a lot of do-it-yourself these days. So I think that when you're doing something, you, you, you're going to learn from your mistakes. So in my videos, I'm going to include those mistakes and I, we will work through them. So if you see me fumbling around a little bit, I'm learning with you. Um, sure, you can go watch another video that someone it's going to, be like right down right you know everything's gonna be like perfect um, that's fine if that's what you want but I rather be honest and show you what the mistakes are and how to work through them so if you see me fumbling around I'm learning too <laughs> okay so let's go back okay so the number one was the stitch Number two shows you the size. I will figure out how to do that. Number three is your stitch preview. It shows a preview of the selected stitch. And that is 
this one right here, your line right here. Number four is your presser foot. It's going to show you what presser foot you use for that stitch. So if I was to go, let's flip through some pages. Okay, so all number one stitches at the number one are going to use presser foot J. So let's go down here to, to five. Let's go to five. And I'm going to select, let's just do this one. Okay, so that changed right there. And it tells me that to do this stitch. Oh, look at that. What is that doing? Look at that. Oh, I just learned that. That's interesting. Okay, so that's going to show you what, what foot you need to use for that stitch. Okay, so let's go back. Go back to number one. We're going to cancel that pattern we were playing with. And so, again, that is your sewing foot you're going to use. Number five is the needle position. Um, the needle position setting, um, it shows single or twin needle mode setting and the needle stop position. So um, I have a single needle on there. In the manual, if you're using a twin needle, it'll show two needles on there. Okay. And then our next one, number six, is going to be your stitch width. Number seven is your stitch length. Number eight is your left to right shift. And the left to right shift shows the tendency of left right of the center line for the original zigzag stitching. Okay. Um, another thing to go in further in depth on these things in the manual, it's going to show you so see where it says stitch with, that it's the number six option um, button. This is what that looks like, stitch with. Shows you the stitch width of the currently selected stitch pattern. If you want to know more about it, you go to page 29. Okay? So I'm just showing you what the LCD screen, I'm not going in depth too much of what things do. So then we have our manual adjustment key, which is this one. And that is going to, you press this key to display the adjustment screen of the stitch width, stitch length, and the left right shift. So that's what I was playing with earlier. You can set your stitch to go wider. You can set it to go longer or you can clear it and it takes you back to default of what that stitch is. Okay. So then you have your page display and this goes through your pages. Then your next one is to edit and your stitch switching key. So that's this. Oops, sorry. That's this one. So you press this key to toggle between the stitch editing screen and the stitch screen. So I will do a video, hopefully within the next few days, that you can edit the stitches and combine your stitches together to give yourself a unique stitch. Um, I have not done that yet, so I think that's going to be one of the ones that I'm going to um, practice on a little bit before I film the video, just so I know exactly what we're doing. Okay, so there's that. And then page 27 will tell you more about that. And let's go back. And then this one is your image key. And your image key shows a preview of the stitch sewn. If you press this one that looks like the little spools, 
You can change the thread color in the image to red, blue, or black. So that's red. And let me, this just makes it a little larger so you can see it. You can, it's just got one thread. You can change it to black. You can make it thin or thick, whichever one you prefer. Um, I kind of, whoops. I like it on red. Just it's a little more easier just for me to see on the screen. I don't know if you can tell that that's actually red. Okay, so now we're going to go back and let's see. Number 13 is, let me see. where our 13 is. Okay, so now we're gonna go from our decorative stitching or our, our utility stitching to decorative stitching. Okay, so we're gonna select the, oops. Okay, so before I get too far again, there is a way that you can go into your settings that you can adjust the sensitivity of your screens. Um, I keep on tapping them, so I may go in there and set those. Um, look in the index, and it will tell you um, sensitivity. And you can look. Let's see exactly what that what it says. So. Um, where was it? screen. I'm looking through real quick. Um, let's see. Is it display? No. Okay, so I know there's somewhere, I, I might have saw it just on the screen for the settings. So we'll, we'll check on that in just a moment. But I know there is a way that you can set your sensitivity. I didn't see anything for where it said sensitivity. So, um, sewing speed, no. Look through it. We'll look, we'll look through that in just a moment. Um, okay, so we'll check that in a couple minutes. And okay, we're just going to jump right back into it. <laughs> I can't find that, but I know there is a setting that you can go in to do your sensitivity, and it's got to be in the settings somewhere. So I'll check that in just a moment. So our next is going to be with our decor decorative stitches, um, how we were on the first page, and um, this one was your edit stitch your image key, then we're gonna go back and we're gonna select our decorative stitch and you have all these new little buttons pop up. Well, now what you're gonna do is your number 13 in the manual, which is this one, is your memory key. You're gonna press this key to, sa to save combined stitch patterns Okay, I have not done that myself, so we will, I have a video planned to do that, so stay tuned for that one. And then your next one is your automatic thread cutting. What you can do is you can press this key to set the automatic thread cutting function. So when it's pressed, it's going to automatically cut your thread after you 
you'll see that this is also lit up, your reverse key. So when you're sewing, when this is selected, it's going to lock, when you first start, it's going to lock your stitches, okay? Then when you finish your line, you will hit your reverse to lock up your stitches, and it's going to automatically cut your thread, which is fantastic for quilters. Especially if you're doing free motion quilting and you have to stop somewhere in the middle of the quilt to tie off a thread, if you have to change a thread, or you're going to change thread colors, that's really great because it's going to back up your stitch, reverse it, and lock the stitch so it's not going to come out. And then it's going to automatically cut for you. I just love that. Um, I think that's why I don't do a lot of free motion quilting because I don't want to bury my threads and trim them. Um, that's another story. <laughs> okay, so our next one is, of course, I just stated the automatic reverse reinforcement key. And then our next one, when you go... Um, I'm going to hit this one, and it's when you... No, where is it? This one. Okay. So it's this one where, again, it's got the single repeat sewing key. And what that does is it you press this key to choose a single stitch pattern or continuous stitch patterns. Depending on the selected stitch, this key may be disabled. To finish a complete motive while sewing and stitching pattern continuously, you can press this key while sewing the machine will automatically stop when the motive is finished. So say, um, let's go back. Um, oh heck, I'm just going to show it to you because it's so stinking cute. It's got an alligator. And I will show you. I played with some of the stitches because I just had to see the alligator and that's what your little alligator looks like and this is the short one the longer one depending on how you do your stitch length and width so that key would be if you just want one little alligator you would hit that key and it says this mach this machine will automatically stop when that motif is finished so I'm assuming that one alligator is one motive. So it'll sew one and stop. So if all you want is one, you will hit that. Okay. And then our next button is the, this one here. And this is back to beginning key. When sewing is stopped, press this key to return to the beginning of the stitch pattern. And then some of the following keys will appear depending on the selected stitch pattern. So I'm going to go back and back again. And on your, um, these are the decorative. And back one more. And your satin stitches. So on your satin stitches, when a satin stitch pattern is selected, you press, where is it? I'm guessing here? No, okay, on this one. Is that one yet? No, where is it? This one? No. Oh, I have to select the stitch. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm learning. Okay, so on this one. So when you've got your, I didn't select the stitch, that was why. So when you select your stitch and you go into the edit stitch swing key on here. So on here, watch what this does right here. It's going to make that stitch longer or shorter. And that's what that one does. Then you also have... After selecting a decorative satin stitch, 
So let's go back to our decorative satin stitches, which is here. Um, it says you use Which key is it? Not there. Not there. I'm not sure where it is. Hmm. I'm not sure where the thread density key is. Um, it says that sometimes it'll be here, but let's let's just go all the way back out of here. And We're going to cancel that stitch, so let's go back to here. So, and now when I hit here, oops, okay, how I said we're learning, I'm going to select, let's just select this one, and there we go. Okay, so this key, sorry about that, it just, I'm learning, I'm learning. <laughs> um, what this key is going to do is it's going to change the thread density of the stitch so when it's on this side that's lit up is low density when it's on that side it's high density so you're it's going to be a thick or a thin stitch so where it's at now is thicker when it's on this one it's thinner okay so let's delete everything because we don't want nothing there so we're going to go back so again like so. Okay, so delete. And right back. And the delete key is you press this key to delete the selected stitch pattern. When you make a mistake in combining stitches, use this key to delete the stitch patterns. It's the very last thing that it tells you in the LCD screen. So I was fumbling a little bit with it, but this kind of covers everything that your LCD operation and your control panel part, this part portion here will do. Um, sorry about the wishy-washiness. Um, we're learning together. And if you have any questions, please comment down below. Um, I will do my best to do a video and we will work through those together and um, when you're learning I'm learning so hopefully in the next video we are going to do um, we'll go through what the settings screens um, for our settings menu right here all cover and I'm hoping to do that one very soon. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Give my video a thumbs up. That lets me know that um, you like the videos and it encourages me to make more. Please, please, please leave a comment. Um, I don't have a lot of people that are leaving comments and I'd really, even if it's just to say hi, please say hi. Um, Let's see, what else can we do? Um, how about if you made it all the way through the end of this video, leave a green heart emoji. Okay, hopefully I see lots of green hearts emojis. <laughs> all right, we'll see you all soon in the next video. Bye-bye.